and he joins us now. Yes, the Melbourne co-captain, we'd love to see him out there tonight for what is a massive game for your club. Unfortunately, Jack, you're sitting with us uh, tonight. Can you give us an update? Will we see you again this year? Yeah, I'm pretty confident I'll, I'll be back for um, the last two to three games of the season. Um, you know, it's feeling good at the moment and um, yeah, we'll, we'll start the kind of uh, back into training loading process um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks and yeah, see you for the end of the year. Nice to have you here, Jackie boy, a fellow hard man, which I enjoy <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're probably too hard for your own... Don't be laughing, by the way. You're probably too hard for your own good last year. In, in hindsight, that was what cost you. Yeah, you know, I, I felt, uh, you know, this time of the, the year last year, I was, uh, the club was kind of on the brink of, of playing finals and I just felt I had to do whatever whatever I needed to do to try and, um, you know, make that, make that happen. Unfortunately, neither. Um, I hurt myself even more and we didn't make finals. So it was just at the time I made the call and thought that I needed to push myself. And hey, tell us about the mindset of this team, because I think it's fair to say the footy world for now is largely doubting you, yet to beat a top eight team, all that, you know the story. Would you rather be underestimated or does it get up your noses? Oh, I kind of just take it for what it is. Um, you know, does it annoy when Sam asks questions like that? No, 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 I think it's a... I was no, feeling no, a bit of frost. <laughs> it's, got, it's got to be asked and, um, you know, I just see it for what it, you know, it is what it is. I don't look too deeply into it and I don't... Um, analyze it and um, try and break it down while we haven't been able to beat the top eight side. Um, you know, hopefully we can we can do that tonight. I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about it. And um, but yeah, we do need to start, I guess, you know, beating these top eight teams uh, to prove ourselves and um, yeah, make finals reality this, this season. Well, Jack, let's take you back in time. You've got red and blue in the blood. Your old man Todd talking a hard start, JB. Yeah, Todd boy. was as hard as enough. Got some great footage here. The Toddy's uh, retirement, that's you with the ball in your hand. Can you remember this, Jack? I look pretty scared right about here. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably thinking three is not a thing for me, but um, no, I can't remember any, any of this. I, this is the first time I've seen this footage. Who did you admire? Who were your heroes in that team? Uh, this was a bit early, but Shane Wilde and um, yeah. later on, that's yeah. when I, you know, growing up, uh, he was my, my number one player, and Dad actually got him along to my seventh Seventh birthday, which is no still my, my favourite birthday of all time. <laughs> wow. Uh, you're ticking plenty of boxes there, uh, Jack, and uh, we did notice that your beautiful Charlotte, far too beautiful for you, by the way, <laughs> has managed to convince that uh, getting married to you is a good idea. Yeah, uh, batting above, yep. um, so I thought I'd try and lock it away. Um, she said yes, so yeah, we're on track. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a stressful planning process. Yeah, are you uh, having anything to do with it? Well, stay I kind of, of stayed out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed out of it. But then I think um, it got to a point where I think it got a bit too much for Sean. I had to jump, you know, man up, jump yeah. in yeah. and get some stuff sorted. <laughs> I tell, tell you one of the hard things getting married as a football player, Jack, you get to the invite oh, list no. and you've got 40 teammates. How many are going to make the cut? Can we announce that tonight? Yeah, not, man, not many are missing. Uh, really? OK. Uh, yeah. Why don't you so kill I'll, two I'll, birds I'll, with one stone and do it at the brown line? <laughs> well, the breast and fairest. There you go. They're all invited. Yeah, there's a couple of occasions there, but uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was hard work, you know, trying to try to draw the line. So I think I just I just said, you know what, we'll invite most of. Fair now, there. now I think you've got a good career uh, post football in the media. Now have, this is one of the best setups for a, uh, a a journalism sort of you know interview I've ever seen. Have a look at this. Would you rather be on the Bachelor or be one of the contestants on the Bachelorette? Yeah, I've thought of this one a few times. Yeah? I reckon, because everyone hates The Bachelor, so I feel like, because everyone, all the women that end up hating them, generally. Yeah, yeah. So I'd go contestant on The Bachelor, right, I reckon. Now you don't see a lot of interviews done in that style. I could see you maybe political interview, you and Malcolm Turnbull in the bath, perhaps, something like that? No, I was like just that. going for something new, you know, it hadn't been done before, so <laughs> just, uh, yeah. Innovative and... Uh, Jack got paid a fresh. lot of money, I think. Fresh. Fresh. Trying to say very old fresh. Yeah. Keep it original, you know. You play from another club, mate. Did you yeah. realise that? It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was it a home oh, or a Very shower? unusual. It was, well, I flew to Sydney for that, so uh, was I, was out of, I was feeling very uncomfortable. Plenty, um, of, uh, plenty of stings, I think, for that one, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what we have got is some vision of what might happen at the back end of the wedding. Uh, just uh, filmed in the, the gym at Melbourne. Here we go, and my idiot nephew's getting involved. Who else is in Harmsy? <laughs> Yeah, Harms and Gussie. Uh, yeah, maybe after a few drinks at the wedding, we'll pull that one out. <laughs> Where's that come from, please? That sort of behaviour. I think it was a uh, from a Drake uh, music video it, it started. So it's a bit of a dance move. Um, 
No one's really perfected it, but we're giving the go <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> hey, Jack, I reckon I've seen it, this fortnight game that all the boys at the club play. Clayton Oliver's all over it. Yep. It's become huge, hasn't it? It's gone yeah. all around the world, and the celebrations around world sport are coming from fortnight. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. Uh, it's taken over the world. I wouldn't recommend that go. one. That's a bit dangerous. But, um, what, what thing? I mean, for, like, my seven-year-old cousin is mad into it. Yeah. Clayton Oliver, who's 20, 21 years old, is mad into it. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy taking over the world. There you go. I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, they used to tell kids to go out and kick a footy, and now kids that are kicking a footy, they're saying, go and play Fortnite. Yeah, go and learn a few dance moves. Hey, Jake, I'm told that some coaches at uh, clubs, maybe even your own, about to say to players, hey, 10 hours of playing that game, a little too much, and they've had to put a ban on the video game. Is that true? Yeah, we, it's getting to that point. Last year, I actually had a, had a chat with a few a group of boys. Uh, like I'm a big gamer myself, so I had to give the, the talk about, um, you know, we keep it in check, but yep. I think they thought it was a bit hypocritical coming from me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it didn't go down too well. Hey, on that, and it is Nathan Jones's 100th gamers skipper tonight, and you're now his co-captain. Now, when that was announced to the footy world, February 2017, he said he was a, you know, it took a bit of getting his head around. How's that dynamic settled between you and how are you the yin to the yang or vice versa? Yeah, Nathan and I are, are going really well. You know, I'm just really relishing, um, I guess, being co-captain with Nathan. Um, you know, he's a super, super captain and uh, being able to bounce ideas off him and, and learn from him. Um, you know, I'm enjoying every, every moment of it. And, um, he's been a super captain and super contributor to this football club for a long time. Let's be honest, Jack, the game is all about the Ruckman. It's oh, never no. been a better time for the Ruckman. And you've got a very fine one, Maxie Gorn, who started to talk up his Brownlow chances. <laughs> He'd be pretty happy with that, Maxie. He's going beautifully, isn't he? Yeah, when he starts talking his Brownlow chances up, I get a bit worried. But, um, no, he's playing some terrific footy at the moment. Um, you know, working really, synergising really, very well with our mids. Um, so there's some good chemistry going on in there, and um, you know, look, there's another, there's a, a hit from Maxi. Are you setting up a lot more aggressively around stoppage, just knowing that he's going to do that stuff? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the the benefit of having yeah. a really um, strong ruckman is you get to kind of play it on your terms, set the players up, run the routes you want to run. Um, so yeah, it's 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 awesome having Maxi as our as our ruckman. That vision of a Melbourne ruckman dominating a Footscray ruckman sort of reminds me of the yeah. late nineties, early two oh, thousands. Big Jeff White, so. <laughs> that, that same sort of thing happening. Yeah. I think poor old Jimmy Stein's copped a couple of eyes, <laughs> I think uh, back uh, back in the day. Jack, can he stick around? Because 